All right, we have a real treat here because we're going to be talking to one of the true uh, ambassadors of astronomy and everything that's going on up above our heads. Because let me tell you, there's always something interesting that's cool, something that we always want to learn more about. And you know who I look to? I look to Tony Rice, who's joining us right now. So, Tony, uh, nice to see you. Everybody's talking about the Great Conjunction. Tell us what's going to happen on the 21st. So this is something pretty rare. First of all, it's an absolute coincidence that it's happening on the day of the solstice, but that's a pretty cool uh, astronomical event as well. Uh, so as we look to the night sky, we see the, the planets moving through the sky, and sometimes they appear very far from each other, and other times they appear very close. And when they're close, that's called a conjunction. So uh, Jupiter and Saturn, they can vary by uh, as much as about four degrees when they get really, really close. Um, this one is particularly close. It's going to be about a tenth of a degree. So if you were to take uh, your, your hand and hold it out to measure the night sky, uh, your pinky finger, that measures about a degree across. Take a dime and hold it on edge. That's about a tenth of a degree, about a fifth of the, uh, the width of the full moon. You'll be able to hold that between Saturn and Jupiter. But the really, really cool thing here, it's not just them being so close it's them getting close so if you wait until next friday you're going to miss out you should over the next couple of days each evening go outside about a half hour after sunset is when they'll become visible and take a look watch them over the next couple of days getting closer and closer and closer now you're only going to have about 90 minutes to do it because uh, the uh, the pair are going to set uh, about an hour and a half after sunset local time so uh, make it a point to, to watch them get closer over the next couple of days. And then after Friday, you'll see them start to get farther apart. You know what I've noticed? Uh, these stories about, you know, once every hundred years phenomenon, and, and in this case, some are saying, uh, you know, last time this happened where it was visible uh, was about 800 years ago. It seems to just bring everybody together because, uh, you know, this is going to be visible worldwide with the naked eye. Uh, is this something right. that's really going to just sort of separate itself from everything else going on in 2020, something that could be a real positive experience for everybody? I certainly hope so, and that's why I so appreciate you and the folks there at, uh, at your station bringing stuff like this up, because there's so much going on in the world now. We, we need something to, uh, to take our minds off of things, and the night sky is a great way to do that. So if you are, are thinking about uh, gifts for the family uh, coming up for the holidays, uh, you know, maybe you think about a telescope, but even better, just get a good book on the night sky, go outside in the evening, give yourself some time to just relax and watch uh, what's happening. We've had plenty of meteor showers in the, in the recent weeks that have been interesting to get out and see, but just get out and learn the night sky. Always give yourself about 15 minutes though when you go outside. Uh, you need that time for your eyes to adjust and you'll really see so much more. It's a great family activity. Now, Tony, you do this all the time. You've been through many events yourself. I'm sure there's some simple hacks, tricks, ways that people can maximize this once in every 800 year opportunity. Uh, what's something very simple that people can do to really enjoy this? Because this is not something people do all the time. Right, I, I mentioned one with you know holding your, your hand out at length and measuring things with your hand. That's a lot of fun. So a degree for your pinky and uh, your fist is about five degrees. Uh, another good one I, I mentioned was that letting your eyes take time to adjust. But doing it over and over again is really important, too. If you do it just this once for big events like this, again, you're kind of missing out. You know, make it a, a point to, to go outside and get to learn the night sky a little bit. Uh, there's apps on your phone. Uh, there's hundreds of them out there that will help you learn the constellations. And you'll start to see the sky change over the the coming months uh, of, of the year and you'll learn the constellations. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, my daughter has a telescope and uh, through her curiosity about learning more about the night sky, I get drawn in and it's something fun for the family to do. And it's gonna be a long time before we're gonna see this again. Tony, thank you so much for your time, for your expertise, for your passion because of, uh, of what you write and let us meteorologists know, we let everybody know in our local area and hopefully I'll see all my neighbors and friends, socially distant of course, <laughs> viewing up the, uh, at the same night sky because I think it's gonna be something pretty incredible that we as adults and certainly kids are gonna remember for a long time. And we won't see it again until 2080, so don't miss your chance. Okay, 
Good. The kids might see it again. Tony, you and I, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Thanks again hey, for joining us. Well, you might do it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks.